insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 136 the return of Disney Wars and franchise favorites. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my warm and caring co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, dear? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm freaking awesome. How was your week this week? (laughs) Um, It's, you know. Almost over. Thank God. That's the important part. Yeah, yeah. So, anything exciting happened this week? Nothing to recap, nothing like that. End of the month, beginning of the month, Groundhog Day. He saw his shadow, six more weeks of winter, but it's 50 degrees out and the snow is melting. Right. <laughs> there's your there's your weekly recap. Done. And until tomorrow <laughs> when it drops to like 30 degrees again. Yeah, and freezes. So, yeah. yeah. So. Yay, Jersey. <laughs> so, this week in our Disney <clears throat> Detective We'll be talking about Abigail Disney firing a shot across Bob Chappick's bow. Pew, pew. While Disney reveals their avenging expansion in Paris. Then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, the Golden One returns to the franchise. And the Galactic Star Cruiser itinerary is finally revealed to be incredibly lackluster. (laughs) And in our entertainment news, Iger on Movies plus walking out on the masked singer. And then we'll finish up with a few insightful picks of the week and a few afterthoughts this week. A new one you just found, as a mm-hmm. matter of fact. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. We've never been to this one. Nope. <laughs> it's the first year for that one? Mm, I don't think so. I think it said oh, like God. six years or something. I don't might know. Be a, might be a jewel that we are, weren't, weren't aware of before. Right. Before we get into all that, I would invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Entertainment. Video versions of all the network's podcasts can be found listed as Insights into Things. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast. I would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback, tell us how we're doing, give us your picks for some conventions that we can plug for you. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We are also on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things where you can find links to all these and more on our official website at insightsintothings.com. Ready to get going? Sure. Here we go. Go for Disney Detective. So Disney heiress, daughter of Roy E. Disney and granddaughter of Roy O. Disney, Abigail Disney, has been a fervent supporter and advocate for workers' rights. So uh, the other night, January 24th, Abigail Disney expanded on her thoughts about the legacy of Disney and the current Bob Chepik era following a screening of her documentary, uh, The American Dream and Other Fairy Tales, at Sundance Film Festival. Synonymous with joy, love, and happiness, the Walt Disney Company have aimed to deliver their magic for the past century, from Star Wars to Splash Mountain, Avengers Campus to Animal Kingdom, Disney is one of the biggest entertainment enterprises worldwide. As Disney hurdles towards the its centennial, uh, the few... 
uh, past years have been tarred by multiple callouts of the Mouse House, stemmed from cast member working conditions, profits over guest experience, and the running and development of Disney brand, notably the theme parks uh, provision of its corporation. Disney has never been exempt from criticism, but ever since the arrival of Bob Chapek as Disney CEO, following the departure of Bob Iger, guests and reportedly cast members too have been critical of the uh, co- um, corporation. Whew. So from a Disney Parks perspective, fans have seen the arrival of the controversial Disney Genie Plus system and the individual Lightning Lane selection following the end of the free FastPass Plus system, while callouts have been made for the overall caretaking of the parks, such as Central Florida's Walt Disney World Resort and anger at cast member pay. Abigail Disney's documentary, The American Dream and Other Fairy Tales, examines workers at the U.S. domestic parks Disneyland Resort, and Walt Disney World. The documentary director and philanthropist recently spoke to The Hollywood Reporter prior to her movie's debut at Sundance, and she said in part, Bob Chepik was the guy who presided over all of the changes at Disneyland and Disney World that we're talking about in this film. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Dynamic scheduling, a euphemism for jerking them around so that they can't get a second job and they can never make 40 hours a week and they don't qualify for health care. She continued, taking a department from 250 shaving it to 200 and expecting them to all do the same work in the same amount of time. There are a thousand ways. There are a thousand ways that they've been cost cutting and much of it came from Bob Chepik and under his command. So I don't really have very optimistic expectations. If anything, it'll probably get worse. Now, following the premiere of her documentary, the heiress expanded on her remark on her remarks during a live Q&A. She offered her sentiments focusing on a uh, consumer-based push to take charge of corporations that do not treat their workers well. She had said, this is an Amazon problem and a Walmart problem and a McDonald's problem. You do have the ultimate power, more power than any CEO, as a consumer to withhold your money from companies that are doing it wrong and spend it at companies that are doing it right. Uh, Roy O. Disney co-produced the documentary, which follows the lives of theme park workers and their journey into activism. Abigail Disney also said that the company was just as abusive and ex- uh, exploitive of their uh, customers as they have been of their cast members, adding that Disney has been driving prices up to ridiculous levels and charging unbelievable amounts for hamburgers and so forth and stripping service away. Recently, during the Disney earnings call, CFO Christine McCarthy stated that portion sizes would be reduced. The news was later supplemented by multiple sources confirming that along with the portion reduction, the price of food and drinks had been increased. So just last week, it was reported that Bob Chepik took away an incredible salary during what can only be described as one of the most troubling times in Disney Park history, pandemic and all. It is not too long ago that the Walt Disney Company had laid off hundreds of workers to cope with the results of the of a COVID world. The report also adds that we'll hold your money from the companies that are exploiting people, she said. You don't really need to take a trip if you feel like it's not a reflection of your values. I think it's natural. Yeah, I think there's a natural affinity between customers and workers, and they need to make common cause together to change companies, she said. Abigail Disney is not the only one to comment on Disney's recent practices. Currently, a petition has gone viral, which obviously calls Bob Chepik to be fired as Disney's CEO. The petition was reportedly co-signed by many Disney Park cast members and fans as well. And this doesn't surprise me one little bit at all. Nope. We've been... We've been discussing this for months and months now. Almost a year, really, when you think about it. Yeah. And, 
you know, to find out that they're going to go even further with reducing portion sizes and increasing costs. Well, I had known about the the price increase because that we even talked about a couple of weeks ago. There was a couple of different reports of guests that had said, you know, oh, this was like 25 cents more. This is 50 right, cents right. more. This is a dollar more. But I had never heard anything about the portion sizes going down with it as well. So now it's like... Why even, you know, obviously, okay, if you really want to go, go, but don't spend money on food because <laughs> you're not going to, you're going to be paying, you know, 20% more and getting 30% less for your, well, your money. And it's, it's difficult to go down there and go to a Disney park and not spend money oh, on food. yeah. They make it exceedingly difficult. Right, right. But, uh. You know, it's good to see that, that Abigail Disney's still fighting that She's good fight. She's still fighting the fight. She, you know, don't give them your money. She and really doesn't like Disney <laughs> at this point. <laughs> and, you know, and you and you got to feel for somebody where, you know, this is your family. This it's is your, your legacy. It's your family name, and they're they're sullying your family name. And, and we're, you know, and I'm sure, you know, I'm sure she still gets something, you know, well, I'm sure she still owns a significant amount of Disney stock and she's getting dividends from it. Right. So to say, don't go and spend your money here, that's affecting her as as well. It's funny how she, it seems as though her her biggest beef is with the theme parks, though. Mm. She hasn't seemed to have chimed in much as far as the other. Well, because probably, avenues. I guess, with the movies and, mm. and things like well, that. Well, you look at all and... the stores they just shut down and all the people they put well, out of yeah. work. She never never chimed in on that. Yeah, she didn't. And maybe that's, and I don't know how the the divisions are, right, you know, with everything. Right, but if you're to be a champion of the workers, you have to say something have to about do everything. them laying off that many people yeah. by shutting down those stores just, you know, out of the blue. Right, right. Which, again, is another thing where that was a lot of people can't get to Disney. Right. So and a Disney store, of right? Disney mm-hmm. was that was their ability to go, and, and like I, I don't. Maybe they're relying so much on their e-commerce side of things with that, but well, and the that's, Disney store was an experience. Right. It wasn't like just going to Walmart or right. Target or something. Yes, it was an experience, and especially when they had those little added monthly, right, bi-monthly events. events, it was kind of like, yeah, okay, well, I can't was, do Halloween in the park. Like your Disney Goodwill ambassadors yeah. around the world. Yeah, yeah it really was. a little bit of magic, and you just decided to stop doing that mm-hmm. for no good reason. Well, and I think, again, it, a lot of it's the, the e-commerce side of things. The You know, you have a lot of... Right, and you can sell through that, mm-hmm. but you can't bring that experience through that. Right, exactly. No, I so. know. Anyway, so what's Disney doing? Disney doing something in Paris, right? What are they doing out there? <laughs> so here's some positive Disney news. So Disney just gave us some serious, exciting information about one of its upcoming expansions within the Disney parks. So obviously we know a lot of things are coming to the Disney resorts. Uh, so we have the Tron coaster at the Magic Kingdom, Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind in Epcot, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad uh, in Disneyland in Southern California, and now internationally, uh, some guests in Disneyland Paris are going to see uh, the Avengers Campus expansion. So the first version of the Marvel-centric land opened in Disneyland's California Adventure last year and features a whole host of Disney, uh, Mar- I'm sorry, Marvel-themed attractions and entertainment. And recently, Disney revealed that some very exciting visuals for this new land, which are now going to be coming to Disneyland Paris. So in the photo they have a brand new Iron Man coaster uh, vehicle that they show and the ride will replace Disneyland Paris's version of the rock and roller coaster while there is not an exact opening date for Avengers Campus at Disneyland Paris guests should be excited after seeing this new art as well as all of the available things that will be coming 
to Disney's uh, Avengers Campus in Anaheim. So the Disneyland Paris will be themed completely around the Marvel Cinematic Universe and will feature countless Marvel characters like Iron Man, Doctor Strange, Loki, Black Panther, Black Widow, Captain America, Hawkeye, and countless others. Uh, They had recently covered that more progress was being made on the Paris and now more stuff to look forward to if you're in that area. Which I think is, I should turn my mic back. Probably. (laughs) Probably a good idea. I think it's cool that they're bringing it to different locations. It's a shame that they're not bringing it to Florida, though. I I know. Florida is the one area that you've got a surplus of real estate. Right, right. Um, And you you, you get your biggest crowds in Mm -hmm. Florida, too. Right. So... I don't know why they're holding off on doing it in Florida. I'm I'm guessing probably within a couple of years you'll probably see. See, I it think what they need to do is they need to come out with like their adventure land park and break off Star Wars and Marvel. Mm, I could see that. You know, all the all the action movies break that off into their own well, park. And there. really that could be what Hollywood Studios becomes. Re- yeah. That's really And that's really what it's going towards. Right, because you have Star Wars because that's you know, because you have Star Wars, you know, you have Galaxy's Edge in, in California and it kind of it doesn't really go, but it goes. But then, you know, in in Florida it makes sense where Well the problem it is, is they they're spreading it out over multiple parks though, because they're putting right. the the Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. That's weird that Epcot. that's in Epcot. Like that shouldn't, that, that should have also no been, but I don't know. Then nobody would go to Epcot. They'd all go to <laughs> studios, which is nice because studios has been neglected for a long time. Right. Now. It's nice that studios is finally getting, uh, you know, it, it's, it's well-deserved, you know, exactly. thing. So, yeah. So anyway, but we're not getting any of that stuff in Florida. So no. we're going to have to book the European trip and, and go to Paris after okay. it's done. Well, maybe if it's done by next year, then we can go for my birthday. Maybe we could. Hmm. Happy birthday. You're old. <laughs> that was mean. Well, it's a major accomplishment. So we're going to go to Europe for it. Everything's old in Europe, right? It's the old country. <laughs> then I'm really young compared there to... There <laughs> you go. See, that's to make <laughs> you feel better. Thing. I'm young compared to how old things are over there. That's, Great. There thing. you go. Nice. That's what I was going for. <laughs> see, nice see save. There. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we had for our Disney detective. We'll be back in a minute with our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. <laughs> For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. This week in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, a Star Wars original trilogy actor is officially filming his franchise return. Inside the Magic tells us that Anthony Daniels' beloved protocol droid, C-3PO, has been a fan-favorite Star Wars character for four decades, ever since he first appeared in George Lucas's Star Wars Episode IV A New Hope, alongside Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, and Han Solo. Built by Anakin Skywalker, his he uh, best friends with R2-D2 and the bane of Han Solo's existence and ultimately savior of the Resistance in the sequel trilogy's Episode Nine: Rise of Skywalker, 
3 p.m. is an iconic is as iconic as they come. Now Daniels is seemingly officially reprising his role for a new Star Wars project, according to the Star Wars Newsnet Twitter post. While the article accompanying the post indicates that Daniels is working on a droid story, which is reportedly set to be an animated series featuring a new Star Wars hero guided by R2-D2 and C-3PO, it's also possible that he could be working on scenes for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Online reports have indicated that C-3PO and fellow droid R2-D2 will appear in the show set approximately a decade after the prequel trilogy's conclusion, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Both Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen are reprising their roles in the Deborah Chow-directed Disney Plus original series. Whether Daniels is assisting animators for a droid story, or secretly working on Obi-Wan Kenobi, the fact remains that the actor seems to be making his official return to the Star Wars franchise, and that's something all Star Wars fans can get excited about. If you're a 3PO fan, are you a 3PO fan? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I was more of I an R2 fan. I don't think, you know. I didn't dislike 3PO. Right. It was just a little too uppity for me. Right, you know, but I, it's it's nice that... You know, the two of them have been in all of the movies. They've, you know, kind of made their way. They're that, like, constant right, right. stream, you know, well, that kind of connects Lucas, everything. Lucas had even described the fact that their purpose in the movies really was to kind of be the narrators, mm-hmm. the pulse of the audience, to right. give you that audience perspective on things. Right. And you know what? It's amazing that after 40-plus years... He can still get into... Yeah, well, he doesn't always get into it now, though. <laughs> right. you know, sometimes it's animated and sometimes it's... Right, but the fact that, you know, it's such a fitted costume, it's not like, all right, well, I'm just going to lend my voice or, yeah, you know, have it be true. somebody else. The fact that it's, you know, for the most part, him still getting into it and that he's still so connected to it and so beloved, yeah. you know, really and at, that's at the that thing, part like, of it. You know, a lot of actors struggle with being typecast mm-hmm. from a specific role. And this is one right. that he's embraced yes. to the nth degree. Mm-hmm. Um, even when we saw uh, he had uh, narrated or hosted Star MC'd Wars in Star concert. Wars in concert yeah. He embraced it for that. Mm-hmm. He had the golden, you know, jacket, suit jacket. And, right, right. You know, and he really, he he is the character. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. It's difficult to separate the man from the machine in this case. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so to have him come back, because, we, you know, we got our two back in, in Mando, the season finale of Mando. Yep. So we definitely. That the was, droids are, you know, alive and well in that universe exactly so exactly so it is nice to see uh nice to see a return Mm -hmm. Uh, also uh this week we have uh an article about the galactic star boondoggle i mean star cruiser (laughs) Um, (laughs) how do you really feel about it that's (laughs) so hey what can i say i'm i'm honest if nothing else yeah yeah so guests aboard the Galactic Star Cruiser Halcyon will use their data pad, part of the Disney Park, uh, Disney Play, part of the Disney Play Disney Parks app. Say that five times fast. Wow, that was tough. <laughs> Can't even say it once. <laughs> they'll be doing it for many things, but they'll also be managing the itinerary, which is now available. Guests scheduled to depart on select. March dates can now view the itinerary, a map of the ship, and more. The new events tab on the left features Star Cruiser information. As we have not yet boarded the Halcyon, not all features are available, though. Unscheduled activities show up in blue and may be automatically scheduled 30 days prior to your arrival. Check-in is scheduled from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., during which time a lunch buffet is served. Overlapping with a buffet is time to explore the Star Cruiser, a data pad orientation, and the Galactic Social. Much like actual cruises, a ship muster takes place that afternoon, 
followed by a captain's reception. Dinner is served that evening in the Crown of Corellia dining room, featuring a performance from Gaia. An evening of games is on the schedule for the first day, from Sabak lessons to a Star Cruiser exclusive game called Sector Set. A special Chandrila line, Star Line Star Show will take place as the Halcyon nears Bespin. That almost makes me think of the uh, uh, the water pageant, almost. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That, that type of thing. <laughs> There's going to be a special little show that flies <laughs> by. Yeah, yeah. The next morning, guests can choose from a breakfast buffet or a grab-and-go breakfast before transport for a planetary excursion to Batuu. Damn, Skippy, I'm having the breakfast buffet. Right. I am grab not go. doing grab-and-go unless I'm grabbing and going like 20 of them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> for what I paid? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, droid racing, a Savak tournament, model ship building, a Porg detection drill, and a you-know-your-co-pilot game are all options for afternoon activities. Dinner service at the Crown of Corellia Dining Room, because they only have one restaurant, features a taste around the galaxy, <clears throat> followed by a Halcyon Star Cruiser celebration and sweets and treats in the late evening. On day three, guests will be offered a choice of a breakfast buffet or a grab-and-go breakfast, followed by getting kicked off the ship. <laughs> this two-night adventure could be yours for the low, low price of only $6,000 for a family of four. <laughs> um, if I was unimpressed with what I saw so far, as far as the room service and room sizes and all that, this itinerary leaves me even less impressed. They're going to teach me how to play Sabak. That's the interactive part of what they have here. This is pretty lame. It's uh, The worst part is the more information they've released, the lamer it gets. And maybe it's also one of those things where, hey, here's this itinerary, but there's all this other stuff that's going on that's not part of you're such you know, an optimist you really are i'm just i'm trying here i'm 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 there's not six thousand dollars worth there's not there's not two thousand dollars worth i'd spend about fifteen hundred dollars on what they're offering mm -hmm. and that's a lot for two nights oh absolutely okay? well and that's the thing is especially when you think about what an actual cruise that goes someplace exactly what you can get for six thousand dollars and what you're getting here it's it's this is, laughable this it is really a six thousand dollar larp event is what this is That's really and i can is. go larping for a heck of a lot less than six i know we saw on hawkeye that we can go larp in the park <laughs> hawkeye i'll come now if Haw hawkeye would come That's right. that for would six thousand awesome. dollars like larping with freaking like, hawkeye like for six thousand dollars i want like three Star Wars celebrities there. Yeah, it should be Star Wars weekends. Right. It it that's really I what... should be walking out of there for six thousand dollars with a, like a full stormtrooper set of armor mm -hmm. on me when I walk out of there. Yeah, yeah. It uh, should it's... include building my lightsaber. It should include building my droid. Right. No, I shouldn't have to pay for anything else right. because it's of six thousand dollars for two nights. Yeah, I don't know. I. <sighs> It's 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 asinine that they're even asking that. I'd feel bad for the people. I yeah, uh, feel bad, but I don't feel bad for people if it's something where after six months the price gets dropped dramatically. Right, right. And then I'd feel bad for those people that I want to be the first. See, you know, I like I feel, because the people but I feel that bad, did it but first I, are the stupid rich people. Right. And that's the thing. That's why I'm saying I'm like, I feel bad, but I, but then again, I, I don't like, did you mortgage your kids to go or do you just have that much money where, oh, right, $6,000 is nothing. Right. Uh, it's like, it's a drop in the bucket for Right. Me. Like I, there's a friend of mine on Facebook who she happens to be going because a cast member got a free trip. So, and that's the other thing too, is how many of the first group of people that are going right. aren't paying well, for it the because if they're you're going and you're paying for it. You're stupid enough to get ripped off. Right. 
I don't feel any any ounce of sympathy for you whatsoever. But I'm sure, you know, there are so many people that have gotten press passes for sure. it and yeah. the cast members or won a trip. And hey, you know or, what? You if know. you can get if you can get it for free, get one over on Disney anytime you yeah. can. Yeah, absolutely. But that itinerary is a joke. Yeah, so it, it'll be interesting once because again, now we're a month away what it's actual and then i think one of the articles that i saw showed some like behind the scenes photos and they basically just have this box truck and that's the transporter Mm -hmm. so that you know when you get on it i'm sure inside it's decked out where it looks like it's a you know a, a, tra- a transport ship but on the outside it's just this white i'm not i wouldn't box be surprised truck. i would not so be surprised so it was just like what's that and and they kind of figured all right that has to be and that you know where the the driver sits you can't see the driver so they're just in a regular bus driver uniform so it's kind of like, all right, I'm just on a box truck. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. It doesn't, there's nothing that's enticing that us to, sounds, to do it. That sounds about what I'd expect. Because that's really all it is. It's a big, giant facade. Everything right. is a facade. There isn't anything legitimate behind any of this. Right. It's a it's smoke and mirrors to, to steal your wallet. Mm-hmm. Hey, look at this really cool lightsaber over here while they're picking your pocket over yeah. here. That's all yeah. this is. So. Anyway, I'm sure we'll be we'll be reporting on actual st- uh, guest stays and and stuff like that mm-hmm. as it as it opens up. So yep, we will see. That's all we had for our tales from the edge of the galaxy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be back in a minute with our entertainment news of the week. <laughs> Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Go for entertainment news. So this story comes from The Hollywood Reporter and former Disney CEO Bob Iger, in his first interview since stepping away from the executive chairman of the company, discussed the fate of movie theaters competing with Netflix and, yes, the metaverse in a conversation with The New York Times' Kara Swisher. He says, because I'm not working for Disney, I'm liberated. I can say anything about anybody. He joked during the conversation, adding that he was uh, reluctant to single anyone out. However, he did have frank thoughts on the fate of movie theaters, which he believes will be permanently altered by the pandemic and the rise of streaming services. He said, I don't think it's the death of theatrical movies. I think it is in a severe, it is severe injury uh, that maybe doesn't heal, not a f- not fatal to some. Um, he said that adding that the consumers will be much more discerning about what movies they want to see out of the home. He said, I think what you are going to see is far fewer films released for the big screen. Iger also addressed the rise of streaming and the push to get Disney into the space with Disney+. Plus. But he also discussed an ep- uh, epiphany that he had regarding Netflix, which at one point had the streaming rights to Disney films. He said they were helping to build the flat platform on the back of our movies. They deserve a lot of credit. He said, I woke up one day and thought, we're basically selling nuclear weapons technology to a third world country, and now they're using it against us. So 
Iger and Disney took back those rights and sought to create a new war chest of IP. And when Rupert, Rupert Murdoch called Iger and discussed selling Fox's entertainment assets, Iger knew that the deal would be necessary to be competitive in a streaming space. He said, I was thinking at the time, knowing that we're going to launch Disney Plus and enter the streaming business, and this if we had National Geographic and The Simpsons and Avatar and the whole library, that we would have a scale to compete. But he also expressed pessimism about big technology companies successfully competing with firms like Disney despite their significant income investment in content. He said there's no question that deep-pocketed technology companies, Apple being a great example and Amazon being another, have figured out that if they have great intellectual property, if they can get great stories, it'll help their business. He goes, I don't want to suggest that Apple or Amazon's entertainment divisions are lost leader businesses, but they are in those businesses for other reasons. But as the tech world shifts towards the next phase of the internet, which some are calling the metaverse, and what Iger calls Internet 3.0, he believes that Disney has a critical piece of the puzzle. He said to survive an Internet 3.0 world, you need to have some really compelling intellectual properties. I think that Internet 3.0 will definitely be a more compelling experience, certainly more immersive and dimensional. There will be a lot to think in terms of a future, call it a metaverse. I don't think there will be one metaverse, it'll be dispersive. You may have an avatar that you can go all over the place, and I think that it will likely to develop into something real as an experience. However, he acknowledges that the toxic culture on platforms like Twitter and Facebook could only become worse in the hypothetical future. He said, I'm thinking about telling my kids that they should think about creating technology tools for modernizing behavior in Internet 3.0, something Disney should think about as it talks about creating a metaverse themselves is moderating and monitoring behavior. As he discussed his final board retreat where the Hollywood reporters Kim Masters reported that he implored those in attendance to not become too uh, um, reliant. Thank you. Sorry, reliant on data. His successor, Bob Iger, has learned leaned on data for his decision making through a memo earlier this month that talked about the storytelling experience. That was one of the the stories we talked about uh, the other uh, a couple of weeks ago. And is that in a world of business that there's a wash with data and it is tempting to use data to answer all of your questions, including creative questions. But he urges everybody not to use it. Um, acknowledging the accuracy of the comments to Swisher, Auger, Iger explained on expanded, I'm sorry, on those thoughts, saying that while it is useful to find out what people like about something after the fact, creative decisions still need to be made based on some level of uh, instinct. If we had tried to mine all the data that we had at the time to determine whether we should make a superhero movie that was about an authentically Afro-futuristic world with a black cast, the data would have said not to do it, and Black Panther would have never been made. And, you know, he he hits on a number of interesting insights here. Mm -hmm. uh, but the one where he talks about Netflix taking their intellectual property <laughs> as being selling to a third world country. Right. That was a conscious decision that Disney made because yeah. they saw dollar figures. Right, because they didn't... They didn't have a platform to release it right. on. They were still releasing all their stuff selectively through their Disney Vault program right. on DVD. Right. And Netflix came and offered them a boatload of money. And, and it was like, hmm, it. okay, right, yeah. So, yeah, you were selling nukes to a third world country because you were a bunch of money grubbing People that wanted mm -hmm. the, the cash for it. Right, right. You know, had you taken a step back and been innovative. And decided to start something And, and built up something, right then. you know, waited two years, built out your own thing, and then put it out there, then you could have capitalized on all of it. Mm -hmm. But instead, they wanted their cake and they wanted to eat it, too. Well, and also at the time, Netflix was, you know, back in the day, you were actually getting DVDs in the mail. This, right, you know, that's true. So that was probably, it was just 
you know, at that point, probably Disney didn't want to deal with that part of it. But as Netflix, you know, went to the streaming, yeah, that's when they realized, his, oh. His take on the metaverse, though, is funny because meta just took a huge uh, drop in stock. Mm. So much so that uh, on paper, at least, Mark Zuckerberg lost about $20 billion. Oh, poor the, thing. The stock drop. Mm. Based on their earnings, because the first for the first time in the company's history, they had fewer people. They had a decreasing number of people using it on a daily basis. Mm. I don't know if this vision of the metaverse is really going to fly. It sounds a little too much Ready Player One style. Yeah, yeah. You know, futuristic to me that I don't see that really being the direction that things like Disney are going to go. But look at Wally. <laughs> Like that's really where you know where Wally kind of goes. You know, like they put so much into a metaverse, really. You know, so they they yeah, kind of I mean, see where it's going, where they don't want to. And I understand do that. that. And, yeah, and the fact that we've made movies about the direction that we're going, we've made movies about you know robots that turn on us and kill everyone too, and True. we're putting Hellfire missiles on drones. Yeah, well. You know. So we don't always learn our lesson. I'll no, give you that. No, yeah. Um, but his take on movies. I was just going to say the movies because we have been talking about that for years and especially with the pandemic. And, you know, now you're making it easier for people that don't live near a movie theater because there are people that have to travel an hour or two hours to sure, get to yeah. a movie theater. And now you're giving them that experience. So now you're opening up well and the, to... the going to a movie theater has its own drawbacks mm -hmm. there's cost there's convenience right you know it got to the point where movie theaters started putting in the reclining chairs because that's what everyone had in their home theater right to try to compete with home theaters which i thought was hilarious right but the thing is but people have home theaters at home right you can watch a movie on a you know a 70 inch 75 inch 4k tv mm -hmm. with you know, surround sound, surround sound and, mm -hmm. and it's just like you're at the theater and you can start the movie whenever you want to and most importantly you can watch an avengers movie and pause it, <laughs> and to, go pause to, the it to go to the bathroom and not have to miss credits or any right and i can go scene. get my own snacks i'm not paying ten dollars for a soda and right. you know, i'm not getting marked up so there's a lot of appeal outside of the pandemic mm -hmm. for me to watch movies at home absolutely and it's going to take a lot for me to go watch a movie. There's only a few movies that I really, you really need to watch in a theater. Right. And those movies look really good at home right now with mm -hmm. my TV and my surround sound and my comfortable chair. And so it's going to take a lot to incentivize me to go back into the movie theater. Right, right. So I think he's, you know, he's got a yeah, couple of points there. It, and that was kind of why I put this in because it was touching on so many different aspects that we've all been you know talking about over you know the the past couple of years yeah. so and he's not a stupid man mm -mm. he's no. got enough experience under his belt he's a very intelligent individual and and he he can recognize the mistakes that he's made and and where he could have gone differently mm -hmm. and and i have a respect for people that can recognize their mistakes and learn from them mm-hmm uh, sadly, a lot of people can't. Yeah. Speaking of mistakes, <laughs> let's talk about some drama that happened on The Masked Singer. So The Masked Singer judges Robin Thicke and Ken Jeong reportedly protested Rudy Giuliani's participation in the Fox competition series. So according to Deadline, The Masked Singer judges walked off the Fox set in protest last week after Donald Trump's personal lawyer was unmasked. The outlet reported that their co-stars, Nicole Schwedziger and Jenny McCarthy, uh, remained on stage to speak with the politician whose costume hasn't been revealed yet. Following a brief break, Thick and Zhang allegedly returned to the set and spoke with Giuliani. The upcoming, upcoming season of The Masked Singer is themed The Good, The Bad, and The Cuddly, with contestants' costumes centered around one of the three descriptors. 
After news broke of Giuliani's reported participation on the competition series, celebs took to social media to express their disdain. This is an incredibly disturbing stunt, two and a half men's, uh, men's John Cryer tweeted. Rudy Giuliani helped to engineer a coup attempt. The producers of the show should be ashamed, added Zeth McFarlane. Anything for ratings, right? In January, Giuliani was subpoenaed by the House Committee investigating the January 6, 2021 attack on the Capitol. According to NBC News, the committee says Giuliani is one of the individuals who publicly promoted unsupported claims about the 2020 election and participated in attempts to disrupt or delay the certification of election results. This isn't the first time that the mass Singer has drawn backlash from their casting. In March of 2020, the show was criticized when former Alaskan governor Sarah Palin was unmasked as the bear. Well, and uh, see, Stop I, doing I, that. I, I really need to turn that <laughs> mic on before I talk. Um, I think they hit it on the, on the head there. Anything for the ratings, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not a fan of the show myself. I don't, I don't watch the show, but you know, kudos to these two judges for for standing, for standing up. up yeah. You know, yeah. I, I don't know what else to say about it other than it was a really bad taste and a stunt. Mm-hmm. Is what it was. Yeah. So that was all we had for our entertainment news this week. Yep. Uh, we'll be right back with our insightful picks of the week. Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick is from Netflix, and it is Getting Curious with Jonathan Van Ness. So Jonathan Van Ness lets curiosity lead the way while roving from snacks to wigs in his podcast spinoff, Chock Full of Experts and Special Guests. The series is a spinoff from the Queer Eye Stars podcast of the same name, in which Van Ness quite literally gets curious about a topic and then speaks to various guests about it. So Van Ness is clearly a star. The former hairdresser made his name, uh, made their name when the extremely fun Gay of Thrones online recaps and went on to become part of the Fab Five on the updated and much improved Queer Eye makeover series, which is always good for a cathartic cry and a renewed sense of faith in humanity. Van Ness is one of the participants often... Uh, who opens up to, usually while having their hair spritz, uh, he's very amenable, uh, warm, and an impressive interviewer, and gives you the impression of someone who generally wants to listen and learn. Uh, they are also excitable. Uh, all of this sets up for a host of all sorts magazine show. The show kind of reminds me also of the Jeff Goldblum, uh, The World According to Jeff Goldblum on Disney Plus, which is part of Nat Geo, where there's one topic and they kind of, he kind of explores it. So Jonathan, he's he's just a joy to watch in general. Um, but the shows they kind of go all over the place because the one episode was about bugs and you know and kind of giving you a little history on bugs and then one was on snack foods and sugar and why we like sugary foods and then one. Um, was on um, gender identity. So it went from, you know, bugs to gender identity, which was a really deep uh, conversation to to have with, with different individuals and different guests and stuff. Um, so again, reminded me very much of the Jeff Goldblum show. There's only, I think, eight episodes in it. I've only watched like four of them, uh, about half hour little shows. But if you're a fan of Queer Eye, you probably love Jonathan. So this would be something, you know, for, for you to watch. So All right. Good pick. Thank you. So my pick this week is The Walking Dead Origins on AMC. The Walking Dead Origins is a limited series of specials in the Walking Dead TV universe exploring the journeys of the series' most celebrated characters. Spotlighting Daryl, Carol, Maggie, and Negan, each episode of The Walking Dead Origins charts the story of the zombie apocalypse from the point of view of a single character 
and features new interviews and narrations from the actors that portray these iconic characters interwoven with clips from the most pivotal moments of their journeys so far. Each episode will feature an exclusive sneak peek of Season 11 as well. Accompanying each special will be a best-of collection featuring fan-favorite episodes for each character. So the first one that we watched was the Daryl special, and Mm -hmm. it wasn't any groundbreaking new footage or anything like that of the character, but it was very interesting seeing the the actor who portrays the character actually walking you through the life cycle right of the this evolution character. of him yeah and you know giving you insight to the emotions and the motivations and how they were feeling at a certain time and mm-hmm. how the character has changed now a lot of that stuff is stuff you pick up watching the show but hearing it from the actual person mm-hmm. who is the the character was I don't know. It was a it was a very unique experience mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. Typically, when you see actors do interviews, they don't refer to themselves as the character, mm-hmm. but they kind of will talk about the character in a third person type of perspective. Mm-hmm. And this was almost like a psychoanalysis. Yeah. Of, yeah. Of the it was. Character. It was very well done. Yeah. yeah. It was. It was very interesting. It was very insightful. Um, and it was interesting the the parts of the overall story that they picked to highlight mm-hmm. the pivotal moments in the character's history. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've watched one. We have two more to mm-hmm. watch that are out, and then the uh, the Maggie one is the last one. Mm-hmm. But uh, definitely enough to whet your appetite before it comes back because it comes back this this month. Uh, yeah, end of February it comes end back. End of this month, so. so it's kind of a nice to get you back into that swing of things. Yeah, and it was interesting, especially with the Daryl one, for anybody that's been watching it for however many, you know, for the so many years, is to see how his arc has totally shifted because he was like this complete... And to see how his hair has changed. <laughs> And see how young he was yeah. and, and how, you know, how he's aged. Um, you know, even just looking at Negan in the flashbacks and stuff. And it was like, wow, the, everybody's really changed so much. Yeah. So, yeah, some of it's makeup and some of it's, you know, prosthetic. And what's, and, what's funny yeah. is, you know, I got into Walking Dead You got into late. it late. And I started watching, oh, was it season seven or, right. or whatever. And then I went back and I binge watched. Everything from the beginning. Everything from the beginning over the course of mm-hmm. about two months. Yeah. Which was a lot. <laughs> especially was. the wandering season in the world. Yeah, woods. That yeah, was that was a bad year. <laughs> but um, it was interesting because I could see that character development right. over that short span where I don't think I would have seen nearly and that kind of conversion And that, that was time. the thing because for us watching this – we were watching it as two different, you know, you were watching it as somebody that like, oh, yeah, I remember seeing that. That all happened within, you know, the the two weeks that right. I watched it, where for me, that was like three years right, worth right. where I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, OK. You know, like stuff that I I know happened, but I don't remember it as well as you do because yeah. you're more recent. Well, and that's what with I watching it watching too. is. God, they really drag things out. <laughs> like, there's a story arc that takes an entire season that you could have got done in two episodes if you cut all the other wandering stuff right, out. Right, right. Where, like, y- you you don't have the same sympathy right. <laughs> because I had to go through a whole year and a right. half like, to I get to that. I would have stopped and... watching this show if I had to do that. Well, and that's the thing, too, is there were a lot of people at certain points that gave up on the show that were diehards from the beginning and then certain things that happened. If I had to go, and I think it was season three where it was the wandering one. If I had to go through that week to week and not have the story move at all, oh my God, I would have quit midway through that season Mm, and stopped watching it because it was agonizing. The only way it made it even close to being bearable is that I got to get that entire season done inside of one week. (laughs) And then to know that you had a better season. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so that's that's what um, I was watching recently was uh, Walking Dead Origins. Good pick. AMC. So we'll be right back with our afterthoughts. (laughs) 
So what do we have for afterthoughts, dear? So uh, coming up the end of February, February 27th, is NerdFest, which is part of Jersey Shore Comic Book Show. Uh, the event will take place at the Holiday Inn in Swedesboro, New Jersey, on February 27th. It'll be from te- uh, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Admission is $5.00. Kids 12 and under are free with a paying adult. There is free parking. They will be featuring artists, vendors, comics, anime, toys, Funkos, non-sports cards, crafts, Pokemon, cosplay, face painting, interactive activities, collectibles, and more. Would more include a better website? Because their <laughs> website is a Yeah, their website is is not... This is oh, yeah. Come on, guys. but the the good thing is um, their vendors are already sold out. There's no so that leads me to well, believe. Good. Maybe maybe if it's that successful, they can pay someone to do a decent <laughs> website for them. Well, maybe you can send them an email and say, "Hey, yeah." Um, they also have another one that we'll talk about probably in a couple of weeks. Uh, that's in April. Okay, uh, so. What else? Yeah. We got one more. So then, of course, your favorite. Zolocon. <laughs> and that is March uh, 5th and 6th. Uh, general admission on Saturday is $15 and $5 for children. On Sunday, general admission is $10 and children are free. See, I, I went back and you updated could. You that. Clean, clean that one off. Uh, yes. Good job. Uh, this one is held in Warminster, Pennsylvania, at our one of probably our favorite locations for any event. Uh, unfortunately, we've never gone to anything besides Zolocon here. Um, it is the Fuge, yes. formerly Brewster Aviation, if you want to look that one up. There you go. I knew you were going to be uh, a good source of information for that a one. A historical nerd, yes. yes. Well, I have an entire episode of Insights into History on it. So Right. Hey, Insights into History. Yeah, I've, I've <laughs> written it. I, I, have to, I have to produce them now. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's all we had for today. Uh, Before we do go, I do want to bug you once again to subscribe to the podcast. You can subscribe to audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Entertainment. Video versions of all of our podcasts can be found listed as Insights into Things. We're on Pandora, Castro, Stitcher, Podbean, Buzzsprout, Amazon, iHeartRadio, etc., etc. I never get to the whole list. Yeah, I know. Uh, I would also invite you to email us or reach out to us. Give us your feedback. Give us your own conventions you want us to plug. You can email us at comments at insights into things.com. You can find us on Twitter at twitter.com backslash insights underscore things. We're on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. We are on Twitch five days a week streaming at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can find us on Instagram at instagram.com backslash insights into things. You can also find video versions of this podcast listed as podcast.insightsintothings.com and you can just go to our official website to find all of this information that we just went over at insightsintothings.com that's it another one in the books have a good week everyone bye bye bye